Good morning guys, Half Gluck up here coming at you with a bassier than normal vocal this morning because uh, I got a little bit of some kind of a crud and so it's excellent for my vocal quality. So with that being said, enjoy. Alright, so the topic for this morning, today's Fizzer Friday, is Fizzer Throttle. <laughs> Let me explain. Um, Alright. Straight away, drop a comment down below if you have only ever ridden your Fizzer and no other motorcycle. And also comment down below if you have and the first thing you noticed when you hopped on a different bike was how much easier it is to turn the throttle. Alright, now bear with me. I first discovered that this is a thing um, before I ever owned my Tiger and I discovered it at my first track day. So on the track, in a track environment, there's a method of throttle control called the screwdriver method. Now the objective is, right, so you're leaning off the bike in a, in a turn and to avoid throttle chop, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I told you guys, <clears throat> yeah, to avoid um, unnatural throttle chop through a turn which could upset your line as well as upset the bike um, they teach you to use the screwdriver method and that is essentially like you're holding onto a screwdriver right your index finger pointed out and you are gripping the throttle kind of pointing in the direction of the uh, clip on and you're way down here on the end and you are barely manipulating with just it, uh, you can probably look at it and see why it makes sense versus this right you are very gently manipulating throttle in the turn the problem is that that takes a very concentrated effort um, on the fizzer Th this is hard to do versus I ha happen to have an example the Triumph Tiger look at that <laughs> it's so much easier man like, throttle uh, uh, screwdriver method which is harder to do because I don't have a uh, any kind of a bar end on here but look I can do it with just this muscle and kind of using my thumb and ring finger to make that happen you see so much easier again the fizzer you have to squeeze real hard to do that and you can see it's notchy when you do it because it's, it's just harder to do so at track days you know they would encourage the screwdriver throttle control method and I realized straight away that I couldn't do it and I thought maybe it's just because I suck <laughs> but no after purchasing the Tiger and realizing that it is a fizzer thing I didn't feel so bad um, unfortunately when they ask you know the coaches ask so how did you guys enjoy uh, trying out the uh, the screwdriver method right did that work out great and everybody's like yeah yeah it was awesome all these guys on these super sports and whatnot right and uh, I'll just smile and nod you know never really talk to anybody about it except you guys right now and uh, so yeah that's a thing the FZ6R has some kind of a weird um, like throttle plate tension the spring is it's different and I've always attributed it to the fact that perhaps it's because the fizzer is essentially a beginner's bike and what I mean by that is that Yamaha purposefully wound a tighter than typical spring for the FZ6R's throttle um, so that a beginner rider wouldn't whiskey throttle it so easy you know what I mean so for example if you're just going down the road and you blip at this thing you can't blip very hard versus you can blip the Tiger straight to full throttle very easily so this thing could be notchy if you're coming from the fizzer because uh, it's it's it responds unexpectedly compared to the way the fizzer's throttle responds uh, so anyways what can we do about it maybe not a whole lot but let's go talk about it
nice and cool this morning. Glorious. All right, so the crux of the problem lies here. All right, so that's that little throttle cable plate. And when you turn the throttle, it pulls on the cable mechanism and turns that plate as a result. And when the plate turns, the throttle body valves open the butterfly valves they open up and let air into the engine of course that mixes with the fuel and then bing bang boom you got power all right so obviously it's an issue of that spring mechanism being tighter than it is on other motorcycles so the fizzer has a tight throttle plate spring okay what to do about that well that throttle plate is part of the throttle body you know what I mean <laughs> it ain't coming off I don't think so you guys you probably seen my tutorial where I swap out throttle cables and uh, I manipulate that mechanism quite a bit and you can pull that plate off to get access to the cables and such to work on them accordingly but you if I recall you can't remove that spring plate there's no screws only <clears throat> there's no removable like screws holding it on or anything like that um, I believe that it is part of the throttle body assembly and so the solution perhaps and this is far out there I know but an R6 throttle body set up admittedly it sounds even more ridiculous hearing myself say it <laughs> The prospect of sourcing like a second generation R6 throttle body setup. I don't even know if it would swap directly onto the machine. I don't know if it would. <laughs> There's so many unknowns, dude. Would it require a specific tune? Would it, you know, would it even made up properly? It's technically the same engine. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that would act like or anything. I don't even know if it would be worth the trouble. Maybe we should just accept the fact that this is an FZ6R and it's not meant to be all those things. Now I did read once upon a time on the 600cc.org fizzer forum um, where swapping to an R6 throttle tube is a thing. So my understanding is that the R6's throttle tube is not perfectly round, but it's oblong. Almost like a, a very slight oval effect that provides a ramp up when you twist it. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. I mean, I've never checked it out for myself. And so with that being said, I don't really know what that would mean for the screwdriver technique on throttle control. I don't know if it makes a difference at all. It's a potentially cheap way to find out. And then you look at the fact that there's companies like Motion Pro that has apparently perfected that factory R6 throttle tube. So I don't know which would work better, a factory R6 tube or like a, an aftermarket one like from Motion Pro. But I can tell you this, just right now, I've been riding this bike for a long time, almost a decade. You know, holding throttle position right now at, at between 75 and 80, it's tiring on my hand. It always has been. I just ignore it because I'm used to it. But this will cramp your hand after a while. On my Tiger, you can ride all dang day, man, and uh, not get any kind of hand cramping. So it's legitimately a thing with the spring setup on this on this machine. And maybe, again, maybe there's no solution, guys. I don't know. I am curious as to your opinion and advice on the subject. And, and again, as to whether or not you guys even experience the same thing. <laughs> what if this is anomalous to my bike only? Now, that would be even more interesting. Anyways, <laughs> maybe I should go ahead and sign off before I lose my freaking voice, man. Holy mess. <clears throat> oh, uh, but before we go, in other news, 
Notice our odometer, boys and girls, 69958. We are going to hit 70,000 miles here in the next week or two. That's a big, big thing for this channel because the last time I did an FZ6R review was at 55,000 miles. Before that, I did one at 35,000 miles. So we have essential, essentially doubled the mileage since our very first bike review, which was done in like 2018, I think. So yeah, man, that's a big deal, I think. So yeah, 70,000 mile review coming uh, real soon. I've kind of been trying to get the creative juices flowing, you know, to see in my head what that's going to look like. We got to make it awesome, right? It's got to be epic. Um, I think it's going to be the highest mileage review of the FZ6R out there on YouTube. So I really hope it garners a lot of attention and a lot of views. You know, it's, it's kind of a tremendous milestone, not only for Evelyn in particular, but for the FZ6R. Um, as a model overall, right? The longevity of these bikes, the, the abuse they can take. You turn them into track machines at high mileage and they don't seem to really care in all the things. But uh, plenty to talk about in that review, which will be coming again in the next couple of weeks. But uh, looking forward to that. So hope you guys stick with me and tune in. And hey, smash the like button, please. Uh, give me all the little thumbs. You know, uh, let's beat the algorithm, boys. Welcome to our new subscribers. I should have said that in the very beginning. I try to. I forgot to this time. And hey, I said it at the beginning of summer, man. We keep this up. We'll hit 3,000 by Christmas. Let's do it. Let's go for it. 3,000 subs by Christmas, boys. So hey, if you're new here, subscribe if you haven't already. But as always, boys, on this happy Friday, this has been me, and well, that's been you. Let's have a look up, boys. I'll check you guys on the next one. Peace out. Goodbye.